We are ready to go. Are you guys ready to get started over there? We're ready over here. Please go ahead and start us off. Wonderful. Welcome everyone to the board meeting today. We're holding it by teleconference at two sites. Um, let's uh, start with calling of the roll and then we'll get into it. Okay, uh, members, if you could please identify your location when you, um, when I call your name, please. Uh, Hilda Yaganato. Present at 550 South Hope Street, Suite 1910, Los Angeles, California. Thank you, Jamie Zamora. Uh, here at the Department of Consumer Affairs, Headquarters 1, 1625 North Market, Force 4 Hearing Room, Sacramento, California. Thank you, Kipman Chan. Yeah, present. I'm in uh, 1625 North Market, Borough First Floor, Sacramento, California. Thank you. Dr. Michael Corradino. He is absent. Francisco Shea. I'm here. I'm at uh, uh, 1625 North Market Boulevard, First Floor, Hearing Room. Sacramento, California. Thank you. Jeannie Kang. Present. Oh, 550 South Hope Street, Los Angeles. Bible, we have a quorum. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, let's move on to number two, approval of August 31, 2016 board meeting minutes. Mark, would you mind giving us an overview of that? Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Hildy. Um, these are the draft meeting minutes from Wednesday, August 31st, 2016. Uh, it, it is in the new format uh, that the board has uh, chosen. Um, you know, um, I know that members and and, so, and the public have reviewed these already, so um, definitely willing to entertain any changes, corrections, what have you. Um, Mark, page three, uh, the num uh, number two comment, April 28th, 2016? Yes. Yeah, that's the one I saw. Oh. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? None up here. None over here as well. Um, Shall we take public comments now or, or after the, uh, the motion? We should have a motion first. Okay. I move to approve uh, the board meeting minutes from Wednesday, August 31, 2016. Second. Any discussion from the public? No comments from the Sacramento site. No comment from LA either. We, we actually don't have any public here, so no comment here. Okay. Um, any discussion from the board members? None. All right, let's go ahead and take a vote. Mark? Okay, the motion is to approve the meeting minutes uh, for August 31st, 2016. The vote, Aguinaldo? With the amended okay. corrections. Yeah. With, with the change to 2106 to 2016 on page three. Aguinaldo? Yes. Yes. Zamora? Yes. Chan? Yes. Corradino? Francisco Shea? Yep. Yeah. Jeannie Kang? Yes. Okay. 5 0, motion passes. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Mark. Oh. Let's go to item number three approval of September 21, 2016 board meeting minutes. Mark? Okay, thank you. Um, again, uh, this is just the uh, draft minutes from Wednesday, September 21st, 2016 in San Diego. Um, uh, please uh, review, let me know if there's any changes. Any discussion from the board members? N none up here. Um, I'll motion to approve the meeting minutes from the September 21st, 2006 board meeting. Kidman seconds. Any public comment on 
on your end? No. No public comment here. Any further discussion from the board? None up here. Let's take a vote. Okay, the motion is by Jamie to approve the meeting minutes uh, uh, for September 21st, 2016. Uh, the second is from Kitman Chan. The vote, Algonado? Yes. Zamora? Yes. Chan? Yes. Corradino? Francisco Shea? Yeah. Jeannie Kang? Yes. 5-0, motion passes. Wonderful, thank you very much, Mark. Looks like you have uh, number four on the agenda as well, Mark, regulatory update. Right. Um, I just wanted to give the board a short um, update, and um, Ben is going to discuss um, some ideas for some of the regulations, but uh, I'll just quickly kind of review each one. Um, obviously, the, the first one, SB 1441, will be, we will be addressing um, shortly. Uh, the second one, SB 1246, uh, we <laughs> that'll be our next item. Uh, the third one, uh, AB 2699, um, th we did receive a disapproval from the Office of Administrative Law. Um, it was somewhat unexpected, but um, uh, unfortunately it, it does happen uh, with regulatory packages. It is not considered a major setback. Um, Kelsey and I have been working on uh, figuring out what changes are going to be needed, and OAL was very kind to provide us a pretty comprehensive roadmap. The changes that we do need to make are pretty technical in nature uh, and such, but uh, OAL tells us we do need to uh, re-notice um, the, the, the changes, the changes to the language, which we will be doing. So we will be bringing that back to the board at the next meeting. Uh, it will go out for a 15-day approval, 15-day uh, comment period, and then uh, if it is um, no comments are received or anything like that, we will uh, resubmit it back to OAL for their approval. So um, again, not a major setback, but uh, just something we'll have to kind of work with and move forward on. Uh, the fourth one uh, is the advertising guidelines, the display of license number and advertising. Um, we, are, we are working on uh, revising this language to bring back to the board potentially at the next board meeting. Um, so that will be coming up. Uh, I'm number five, prostitution enforcement and condition of office. Uh, I'm going to kind of turn it now over to Ben to discuss possibilities for that. Thank you, Mark. So with this uh, regulatory package, we've gone back and forth with several uh, department uh, representatives to get better language and better clarification. And what we do have is a tighter uh, package. So we want to be able to send this back to the enforcement committee to review and approve the new language that we have that is more fitting for what uh, the board was originally trying to capture in this. So and Ben, I have a question, or, or Mark. When yes. I've never seen this before, so just for educational purposes, when the AOL disapproves the regulation, what is, what is the basis of that disapproval? Is it, some, is it something in the languaging that we did on our part? How does that happen? This is for the advertising guidelines? Yeah. yeah. No, no, this is the sponsor free health care, the I'm one sorry. that was, the language was disapproved. I just want to just get Thank some you. idea why Number three. Went right. that. Number three. Hi, Jeannie. This is Kelsey Pruden, Legal Counsel. So um, what happens is that there are, um, the Office of Administrative Law is governed by the Administrative Procedure Act. And um, that act sets forth all the different criteria for uh, promulgating regulations and what the board has to do um, in terms of notice, in terms of language, in terms of... Can you talk closely into the speaker, Kelsey? It's, it's kind of a little hard to hear you. Yeah, right? okay. Can you hear me better now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, um, essentially, Mark has included the OAL disapproval in the packet. So it's there for you to take a look at and to see the different um, reasons why this package was disapproved. Um, OAL has seven standards that it looks at in terms of language. Um, they include clarity, necessity, um, I'm blanking all the other ones right now. Um, but, and so they take a look at that and they take a look at our language, they take a look at your authority, they take a look at, um, 
making sure that what was noticed um, for public comment matches what was adopted. Um, there's lots of different reasons why a package can be disapproved. Um, okay. So in this particular case, um, some of the things that I saw and that we'll talk about more when we, when we take it up next time, um, and, and it's outlined in their package, but a lot of uh, things in the initial statement of reasons um, did not match the actual text of the language. And so we had said that the, the regulation text was going to do A, but then the actual regulation text did not do that. Um, and so when we looked at it, we said, well, we want it to do that. That's our intent. So we need to incorporate that into the actual language itself. And so that's why we're going to have to notice it again. So that's just one of the reasons. There are a couple other things um, that had to do with the numbers that we used in terms of the regulation um, numbering um, and in terms oh, of okay. where we put it in our regulations. Uh -huh. So um, it's all outlined there. Um, but as Mark highlighted, um, it's, it's not the end of the world for the reg package. Um, they do happen. Um, and so, all right. yeah. And so, and OAL gives us in their disapproval, they give us a roadmap. And if we check off all those boxes, then our package gets through. Okay, I, I just never seen that, so I'm just asking for educational purposes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, Jeannie. One, one comment also, um, I wanted to see if, if you guys would be interested in potentially adding a column to this um, chart that says the, the due date which we're under. You know, for, for the uh, sunset review stuff, I know that we have to have it implemented by uh, January 1, 2017, and maybe having any potential deadlines that we're facing on this be instructive for us? What do you guys think? That's an excellent idea, Hildy. That way we can, uh, that way we can really determine when we have to get packages, you know, done for review, everything like that. That's an excellent idea. Yeah, and on top of that, this is Kelsey again. Um, when you put out a package for comment, that initial notice, you have one full year from that date to complete the rulemaking package and get it to OAL and file it with them. So that's another deadline that we would be looking at other than any deadlines that are in statute. So um, I, I agree that that would be a good column to add. Perfect. Okay, so the, the first obvious deadline would be to take the date the authorizing vote was taken and to add one year from it? It's not necessarily when the authorized vote is because um, some of these I don't think the board has actually noticed yet. Um, so it's, for example, um, on that, the first one, uniform standards, the public comment period ended May 30th, 2016. So 45 days prior to that is going to be the date that we're looking at. So 45 days before that is when it was originally noticed, and it's a year from that date that we have to have it filed with OAL. Okay, so that would be like mid, mid March or so? Yes, yes. So. Um, Plus one year. April 6th, I believe. Right. And so at that point, um, the package, if we don't get it in, then we have to start the process over again. Okay, wonderful. It looks like uh, with the addition of that column, we'll have to do this in landscape form. Whatever you guys want to do, assuming that it's, um, it's helpful. Okay. Um, any other discussion from the board members? Hearing uh, none, um, let's, do we need a motion for this? I don't think we do. No, but we do have two more items to be updated on. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Mark. Okay, uh, number six, the continuing education ethics requirement. Um, we have been wrangling this over again internally with staff, and uh, uh, we're suggesting send it to the education committee um, for further review and development just to better outline the regulation. So I'd like to suggest that we do that. I would like uh, to send this back to the education committee. No, I would agree, considering this is something we haven't talked about in a while, so. Definitely. Yep. Okay. So done. Okay. Um, and then the last one is hand hygiene requirements. Uh, this was uh, approved back in 2014. We are still 
the, this has taken a back seat, obviously, because we have higher priority regulatory packages. Uh, we're hoping to begin work on this and uh, put it out to uh, public comment uh, by uh, next spring of 2017. So that's our that's our that's our aim. Any questions, members? Anyone? The only one that we've uh, referred to committee so far is number six. And number five. That's going to the enforcement committee, and number six is going to the education committee. Wonderful. Um, do we need an update on the adopted regulations, or is that no. not planned? That's just for your knowledge. Wonderful. Um, no motion necessary? Correct. Okay. Uh, public comment would be public helpful. Public comment? Nothing on this side? Nothing in LA? Okay. Wonderful. Let's move on to number five. This is the consideration and possible action regarding proposed regulations, Title 16 of the CCR Sections 1399.433, 434, and 437 and repeal of CCR section 1399.436 in implementation of SB 1246. Mark, go ahead. Okay, uh, members, um, uh, this is, um, we're considering, again, uh, comments that we received as a result of our second 15-day public notice. We did receive uh, the memo, uh, I'll get to that in a second. The memo uh, obviously outlines just some background about our 1246 uh, rulemaking process. Um, and um, just where we, it summarizes where we are now. Uh, obviously, we met back on September 21st in San Diego to review comments received, and as a result of some comments received and board action, we opted to change the language once again, issued it for a second 15-day comment period, and uh, the comment period closed on October 15th. Um, we did uh, receive uh, two letters, uh, two comment letters, um, which I'll, we'll take up in a minute. And um, obviously set out as just uh, kind of uh, some action items for the board. Um, once again, um, just a reminder, we are really pushing our tight deadline here with January 1st implementation. So um, I, I suggest that we try to avoid making any changes to the language, but obviously if we need to, we will. But um, uh, this way we can um, get the rulemaking submission over to DCA and agency. Um, Kelsey and I were discussing hopefully by the end of next week. Uh, so that will then, um, we will then, uh, we will then move forward uh, when uh, DCA and agency does. So um, anyway, um, I guess I'll I'll start by going over going over the written comments received. Um, Mark, if I could clarify for just yeah. one moment, the yeah. changes that we've made here are just reverting back to the original language that we've had in place before specifically to the observation in the clinic. That's the only changes we've made, and these are the comments that we've received on that. Right, the comments, the comments specifically pertain to just those changes, which are changes to CCR sections 1399.433H and 1399.434H, and these comments just refer to that change that the board approved at the last board meeting. Okay, any questions thus far? All right. Okay, our first letter was from uh, our uh, from Bob Dr. Dr. Bob Demone. Uh, he is a doctor of acupuncture and oil medicine, dean of Southern California University of Health Sciences College of Eastern Medicine. Um, he did have uh, five uh, comments. Uh, distinct. Mark, can I interrupt you a second? Yeah. I think we're having a hard time hearing you. Are you guys around the horseshoe? Yes. Yes. Would it be too much trouble to ask you guys to move to the? the middle table, the, yeah. the public comment table, because we, everyone on the, on the edges who's not in front of the polycom, we can't hear. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I'll do that. Guys, the moon's here. Can you hear me now? Yes, that's, that's perfect. And, um, we also had a question over here. Um, is Dr. Damone 
here at the is he there at the meeting or is he coming into the call? Do we have a? He is, I know Dr. Corradino is not here in San Diego, but Dr. Demoni is here in Sacramento. He is there. Okay, good. All right, I just wanted to make sure. What? All right, all right. Go ahead. The Thank you. Okay. So much better. <laughs> Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay. Uh, we identified uh, five, five distinct comments that Dr. Demone made regarding the proposed regulatory action. Um, the first comment is regarding the proposed language for 1399.433H and 1399.434H. He feels uh, that, uh, and I quote, it is our contention that the practice of acupuncture needling is an entrustable professional activity that can be performed safely, effectively, and independently by well-trained acupuncture interns fairly early in their training and certainly before a 700-hour minimum supervisory period. Uh, staff is proposing to reject this comment. Um, uh, the changes that uh, we are proposing to 1399.433H and 1399.434H do not alter any of the current clinical requirements that have been in regulation since 2005. Uh, needling is a precise incentive procedure and there exists a difference between the didactic instruction and the practice and the clinical application of needling. The acupuncture board's primary purpose is to protect the public and to reduce the risk of public harm. Therefore, supervision is necessary to ensure that skills learned didactically continue to develop when transitioning to patient care. So that's our first comment. Any comments or questions from the board members? None here in LA. None here as well. Would we like to approach this as a piecemeal approval or did we want to approach it as a one full approval at the end of it? Piecemeal is probably better. Okay. The board can entertain a motion. Sure, I, uh, I motion to approve the staff's recommendation to reject this comment regarding section 1399.433H and 1399.434. H. <laughs> Kitman seconds. Or discussion? discussion? Hang on, let's move to public comment. I assume you guys have public comment over there? We can. <clears throat> we have public comment coming up now. Good morning, Dr. Steve Given, California Institute of Integral Studies. Um, I want to start out by saying that I appreciate and honor the care that the California Acupuncture Board is taking with reviewing these regulations. I want to take, um, um, I, I, I want to suggest exception to two uh, parts of that, um, that statement regarding uh, rejection. Number one, the implication was that because there was not line of sight supervision during those 700 hours in question, that supervision was not taking place. That is clearly not the case. Under the Accreditation Commission for Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine, we are required to provide staged training programs with varying levels of supervision and that virtually all the patients. Can you speak closer to the to polycom? I can hear you just like murmuring, and it's really hard for us to hear you. Can you? We're moving the polycom move unit right now. Uh, did you want me to start from the beginning? Got it. Okay. So more gist is coming. So uh, clearly these interns are being supervised and the suggestion that, that there might not always be line of sight supervision does not constitute a lack of supervision. I think the second issue I would like to bring up is the, the issue of public safety. And as an educator, I'm required to do three things. One is I'm required to 
provide the adequate knowledge, skills, and abilities to these clinicians so that when they graduate and apply for licensure, they have strong entry-level competencies. The second thing I need to do is do an appropriate evaluative process. And when it, we have line of sight supervision for so many additional hours, we create a situation where students, cl student clinicians do not have an adequate opportunity to develop independence and self-correction in their work under adequate supervision on the part of faculty. So in fact, it can be argued that by creating such an extensive additional line of sight supervision that we are in fact negatively impacting public safety because students are not having adequate time with a more independent level of, of practice under the direct supervision of our faculty. The third issue I want to just suggest is that the accreditation standard that goes into effect on July 1, 2017, in fact, provides for a strong regulation regarding supervision and the implication that the practitioners being licensed in the other 45 states in the District of Columbia are unsafe because of this additional time, in my opinion, doesn't hold water. That, in fact, the extensive research on practitioner safety throughout the United States suggests that there is not an increased need for supervision in California as prescribed by this regulation. I realize at this point that we're probably far enough down the road that this is going to go into effect, but at least I hope in the future there is some consideration that folks can, at the, on the California Acupuncture Board staff and board members can look at this again and reflect in, on the larger picture when considering what in fact constitutes appropriate levels of supervision in the clinic. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Um, Kelsey, can I comment or? Yeah. Yes, you may. Okay, um, I remember this was a point of uh, a lot of discussion in the last meeting, and when I asked about this, I think it was you or Ben who said that uh, we're going to have another time to revisit this because this is one topic that I have heard from every owner of a school. Um, this part of our uh, mandate and putting out the example of the New York College that chose uh, to decline uh, uh, approval from the California Acupuncture Board specifically because of this section um, of our regulation. And I think from what I understand, it's very, very difficult for schools to comply with this, and yet they don't say anything because they just don't want, they don't want to make any waves so to speak. So I think this is an area as a practitioner that's gone to school and has gone through their training program, um, a, a point of interest that we do have to review, if not today, uh, another time, because this keeps coming up at every corner and it is something that the board has to look at, I believe. So if I could, this is Kelsey, uh, legal counsel, so if I could just, um, Okay, can you scoot up, please? I can't hear whoever's speaking. She's walking to the speakerphone uh, okay. unit. <laughs> okay, so this is Kelsey. Um, and so I, my, my comment about this is um, that I first just wanted to point out that we're we're taking this piece by piece based on the comments received. The first yeah. one um, is it was dealing um, and talk specifically about the 700 hours, um, and that has been changed. We've removed that. We removed that at the last meeting, um, and then we also removed that direct line of sight portion as well. So. Um, and, and to your point about bringing it up, um, the board has the authority to promulgate regulations at any time. It can take up um, you know, the regulations process at, at any time that it wants to. Um, yeah. 
in in this particular circumstance, um, because you have new legislation going into effect on January 1st, 2017, without yeah. regulations, you cannot um, implement that <clears throat> statute. And so um, that statute says that the board has to set curriculum for approval of schools. If this um, if this statute, if these regulations do not go into effect when that statute goes effect into effect, there is going to be a period of time where you, do, you guys do not have the authority to set that curriculum, because I you understand. So let me just let me just uh, mm -hmm. clarify if I understand you correctly, Kelsey. So we already took the language out that said the the direct site. Yes, that has been removed, as well as that seven hundred hour. Um, okay. So. Under, under what you just told me, then I'm okay with it. Steve Givens was just commenting on this, and I thought that these weren't removed. But if they were removed, then I think it's safe to move on, at least for this, this adoption. And for future, I think Hildy was saying, if we move it into committee, we can further discuss what the correct language is. And whoever wants to show up to those meetings and you know, assist in the prog in the prom promulgation of the regulation. I'm okay with that. But long as that 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 term was removed from this language, I think I think we're fine. So I think there's a little bit of um, there's a couple things going on. So we did remove that. Um, we do have to address all of the comments that we received during that 15-day comment period. Got it. So, okay, we're, got so it. we're doing it kind of piecemeal. Um, we are pulling out each of the comments. Um, the other okay. thing is that I think that there is an argument, I, and, I, and I don't want to, to speak for anybody, but um, we did remove that direct line of sight, but there is still that physically present aspect. So, um, and I don't know if that's, that's what necessarily think. what they're speaking to, but that is still there, and that ha that is the same um, yes. has the same regulatory effect that's been in place since two thousand and five. So, so I, I understand. I would like to make a make sure that Mark gets a, gets this in in the notes, and you make a note of it as well, Kelsey. That this is a point of interest. To the board for us to move it into committee if we need to to further discuss this languaging for adoption for today i'm i'm satisfied but in the future i think this is something that we must look at okay because i keep yeah. hearing like you know we have the regulations no one's following it but they're moving along because they don't want to make any trouble that's not how regulations should work it should move along with what's going on outside of the board Absolutely, and, and, that's, and that's what these public comments, that's why we put it out for public comment, that's why we solicit public yes. comment, and, and that's sort of what we're taking up right now. They're being a part of the right. process. Um, right. and, and regulations, in my opinion, are fluid things. They do need to change sure. over time. So yes. um, it's not necessarily set in stone, and, and the board can bring it up at any time that it pleases. Okay, so then please uh, direct us it's, it's the appropriate thing to do after what we have to do today, take care of it today, but if it's um, appropriate for us to move it into committee to have further discussion regarding this section of the so my Yeah, so my suggestion, um, my legal advice would be that you, you, as a board, do need to take up all the public comments that we received during the 15-day modified text period. Um, and vote on those so that there sure. is a record of that, and then, um, it would also be my legal advice that you um, have a motion for an order of adoption um, and of this regulation text so that um, your staff can file it with OAL and complete the rulemaking so that it sure. can be in place for 2017 yeah. so that you guys um, may approve schools. Okay. So, Kelsey, the, the motion for the order of adoption is on page two. I think um, Mark was kind enough to propose some language on that. Is that something that we would do at the end of all of these individual comments and the individual vote, votes to do something like a, a global motion? Yes, because um, we, we need to take up every single um, comment, and it may be that um, one comment changes the regulation text. So we should address all of that first in order to see if that happens, if the board so chooses. Um, and because that's the point of the comments is to, you know, give you some feedback on it. And so if the board chooses at any point to change that text, then we will have to take that up at that time. Um, but 
so it would be my suggestion that you go through all of these and vote either piecemeal uh, each comment or do a global comment vote but at the end yes having an order of adoption um, motion and vote as well so we'll have separate votes okay and the, the point of the order of adoption motion would be um, to kind of close off this process because we've never done this order of um, adoption motion before yes so the order of adoption is essentially what it's going to um, the board is the only uh, entity that can promulgate regs and it's not something that can be delegated um, to your executive officer or your staff. You can delegate certain functions of that, but the actual adoption of the text um, is a board function and it cannot be delegated. So that's what that motion is, is saying we adopt this language, we adopt all the process that's come before it, and now we're gonna tell our executive officer and staff to complete the rulemaking file. Um, you can only allow for minor technical grammatical changes, um, you can't delegate him to change um, or the staff to change any uh, substantive things, but, um, and to file it with, do the actual filing with OAL. So then I, I, uh, Hilde, I'd probably suggest us then moving forward, going through each comment then now, because I, I think we understand the process, correct? Uh, we couldn't hear you, Jamie. Uh, I think we should move forward. Does everyone understand the process that we need to move forward and address every single comment, take a motion on every single comment, and vote on every single comment, and then we will okay. basically do the, the order of adoption afterwards? That's, that's my understanding as well. Um, does anyone have any questions on that? No, we're, we're good, Hildy. Wonderful. We're good here as well. So to go back to uh, Dr. Jamoni's second comment, um, I think Hildy, I'm comfortable Hildy, with the, oh, Hildy, go ahead. I was going to say we're still, we're still on the first comment. Um, we're still on the first comment. Yeah, and uh, Jamie had made a motion to accept staff's recommendation to reject. And we're on the public and comment the, period. Yeah, and now we're, oh, we've got public comment coming again. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Ron Zeidman, president of Five Branches University. Um, I'm encouraged that the board is looking at this uh, section and that the board recognizes how troublesome it is, how uh, it doesn't, how maybe it doesn't really support uh, the safety of our patients nor of quality of education. Uh, so much so, and I'm glad that you've recognized that one college, a very reputable college, refuse to follow a standard that so much undermined the quality of education and so much undermined the safety of our patients. If a school refuses to follow a standard and not be accepted by the acupuncture board, it's probably for a very serious reason, not for a light reason. The reason that this section is, is faulty is that if you are a practitioner of traditional Chinese medicine, the most important thing is to understand the diagnosis. If you get the diagnosis wrong, it's very easy to harm the patient. If a patient has too much heat, but you think that they have too much cold, and you give them a cooling formula, you're going to make their condition worse. So this regulation here pulls the faculty away from the attention that they need on an accurate diagnosis and taking care of the patient to going to observe a needling. So that, that's where this, this regulation pulls the, the, the faculty member from doing their job properly. The people who established this regulation 30 years ago uh, obviously, they had a good intention, and I was fortunate enough to go to the hospitals in China already 28 years ago, and all of the treatments were always done in a community setting, always. There were no private offices for treatment. Here in the U.S., 
The patient is in a private office in most of our schools. Very rarely they're in a community setting. So that makes it impossible for the faculty member to do both a diagnosis and see the patient and observe the needling. In a communal setting, yes, that's possible. In a private setting, uh, it's not. So because of our American environment to require a faculty member to stop the attention that he's doing in talking to students about the diagnosis and to focus on watching the needling is, is not appropriate. The second thing is, in the comment made today, you said the acupuncture training in the classroom academic is not enough. That is very misleading statement. The way acupuncture is taught is, yes, you read the texts, where is the point, what angle do you uh, uh, needle it at, but there's labs in the uh, acupuncture training. The, the needling does not wait for the clinic. The statement made here is the acupuncture training is only academic in the classroom. That is not the way education is done. Needling Ron, is where, are you, where are you reading what you just said? Where is that statement you're talking about? The statement that was read for refuting uh, the doctor's statement was, I don't know my class. Didn't it say that it's not sufficient to have only academic training in the acupuncture, uh, of acupuncture and th therefore in the clinic the supervisor should be observing it? Didn't it say that? No, I, I'll read the proposed board response. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, Mark, where, what page are you reading from? I want to okay, see this. We are on, okay, we are on comment number, Dr. Damone's comment number one. We haven't moved on to any other portion of, of the comment letters. We're just referring, I'll, I'll, should I read it again? Page three. Page, page three, at the bottom of well, page three. I know what page you're on. Page three, got it, okay? Right underneath that. Right underneath that. There you go. Okay, I, I'm, I'm here. Okay, uh, do you want me to read it again, or? Yeah, Mark, you probably oh, should. Okay. Okay, regarding the proposed language for 1399.433H and 1399.434H, Dr. Damone feels, and I quote, it is our contention that the practice of acupuncture needling is an entrustable professional activity that can be performed safely, effectively, and independently by well-trained acupuncture interns fairly early in their training and certainly well before a 700-hour minimum supervisory period. Uh, our, our proposed staff response is to reject this comment and the we say the proposed changes to CCR section 1399.433H and 1399.434H do not alter any of the current clinical requirements that have been in regulation since 2005. Needling is a precise and sensitive procedure and there exists a difference between the didactic instruction in, in the practice and the clinical application of needling. The acupuncture board's primary purpose is to protect the public and reduce the risk of public harm. Therefore, supervision is necessary to ensure that the skills learned didactically continue to develop when transitioning to patient care. Okay, so my, my reading of that is that the didactic part implies that that's all that's taught in the classroom and that there needs to be uh, Okay, maybe maybe I mis misread that. Um, yeah, I think I think Ron, Ron, I hear I hear your comments loud and clear, and I've heard the other you know um, presidents of other schools loud and clear over the over the years of of, of this section. I think um, from what I'm reading here, I think for for today, for what we have to accomplish today, um, we move forward. But I would like all of you to urge the board to look at this uh, when we have more time in committee. And let's go through it. 2005 is, you know, 11 years ago. And I see your point about, you know, the Chinese facilities and how they're designed and how it's designed differently in the, in, you know, in California or, or in this country. Um, I think there's other parts that we can think about. I think the fact that the students get examined on needling individually at the schools, is that correct? 
Absolutely. Okay. So I saw this in Japan as well when I was visiting one of the universities. I think the individual testing of the students and their needling ability, one, it, when, when it's recorded and it's part of our regulation and curriculum to make sure that each student has passed your standards or our standards and, and then they go into internship and they're supervised in the way that you guys are talking about, then I think what we have to be mindful about those students that were not passing in those individual, individual exams, then there's something we need to work with. But overall, I understand what you're saying. Let us do our job today for these sections, but, and let's revisit this, and you know, hopefully we can come to an understanding language in the future that works for you know, the fluidity of the regulations in the future, okay, Ron? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we've got one more public comment. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Dr. Bob Demone from the College of Eastern Medicine at SCU. Thank you to the board for all its attention to these important matters. I look forward to these discussions going forward. Also, at this moment, however, I would like to make note that um, I personally feel that the comment made by the board doesn't really address the issue. Um, needling, quote, and I quote from the uh, response, the, um, the regulations have been in effect since 2005. Certainly that is not contested, but uh, needling is a precise and sensitive procedure. Uh, I do not in any way disagree with that. I think the disagreement is around how much instruction does it actually take to teach this relatively uncomplicated medical procedure, and that's what it is. It is a medical procedure, and I think it needs to be looked upon in that light and discussed in terms of the training required for other similar medical procedures, unless one wants to assert that this is somehow another procedure involving other factors that are not known by science and and such, which uh, I, I hope that's not what is being implied here. Uh, the acupuncture board's primary purpose is to protect the public, absolutely, and reduce the risk of public harm. Again, I'd like to echo the comments of my colleague, Dr. Given. There is, in fact, from an educational perspective, a distinct possibility that excessive supervision could actually lead to less safe practice on the part of a lic future licensee, so that needs to be taken into consideration. And again, supervision, of course, is necessary. And so, again, I'm left feeling that the actual meat, so to speak, of the comment was not really addressed and uh, um, arguing that since the statute has been in place since 2005, that that means that it's okay is not very sound. So thank you very much. And if I just, this is Kelsey Pruden, legal counsel. So we, we do have your full text and we're gonna get to it. We're taking it comment by comment. Mm -hmm. So um, it, this first one is just addressing that 700 hour supervisory period and the um, entrustable professional activity aspect of it. Um, and again, just to clarify that we did remove that 700 hour minimum supervis supervisory yes. period. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, uh, and I do appreciate that. However, Mr. J. Hurt has asserted before that the, uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm misquoting here or misunderstanding, that the 700 hours is the standard actually being applied to schools at this point already, and that this language change was an attempt at clarifying and putting into clearer regu regulatory language, what standard is actually being applied in terms of how physically present is being interpreted. So I feel like we haven't yet addressed the issue if in practice that's being interpreted as 700 hours of direct in, in sight, in line of sight supervision. So I still feel like there's a lack of clarity on that issue. So um, from my perspective, this is Kelsey Pruden Legal. Um, they're trying to codify what they're going to be doing um, in practice. So uh, by removing that 700 supervisory hour period, um, it would not be um, it would not be my advice for them to do so. So um, <laughs> so that's I think um, with that removal, which we did at that last meeting, um, it's it now looks like the it's 250 hours. 
um, if I'm read if I read it correctly. So it's 100, if I may jump in to clarify, right now the standards are that it's 150 hours observation. The next 250 hours is supervision, like physically uh, present during diagnosis and treatment. The next one is supervision physically present during the needling with consultations before and after. Thereafter, there is no longer any supervision required as long as there is consultation before and after treatment. This was what was in effect before. This is what will be in effect going forward. This change from the 700 hours was due to the language indicating that it must be present for the full 700 hours at all levels of treatment and diagnosis. I think um, we just we just have to remember as, as a board and as members of the public to kind of zoom out a little bit from our analysis here. I think our, our narrow assignment is to make sure that the regulations are worded um, with enough um, room and opportunity to make these decisions as to more specific details later on. It sounds like we would need to talk about this at a committee level, but for the purposes here, which is to make sure that the regulations are in place. I'm comfortable with the language that we have proposed because it provides us with the opportunity to make that decision at a later time without hindering us from the progress we have to make today. So I think all of these public comments are very important, but um, I don't think this present um, assignment in front of us is, is the, the place where we have to hash out and, and come to a conclusion as to what these details should be. All we should be focusing on is whether the proposed regulatory language provides us with enough opportunity to move forward and to discuss this at a later time. And to clarify, I think I said 250 hours for stage two and three, it's 275. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Spock. Any other public comment in Sacramento? Nothing here? Nothing here in LA. Call to vote. Okay. That's done. Go for a vote. Okay. Uh, the motion is by Jamie to uh, accept staff's recommendation to reject the comment. Uh, the vote, Algonado? Yes. Zamora? Yes. Oh, I forgot to mention seconds by Chan, sorry. Chan. Yes. Dr. Cordino? Francisco Shea? Yes. Jeannie Kang? Yes. yes. Thank you. Okay. 5 0, motion's out. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Mark. Let's, uh, let's move on to the second comment from okay. Dr. Dimoni. Second comment, uh, from also from Dr. Damoni, bottom of page three. Uh, Dr. Damoni points out the difference between clinical supervision regulations for acupuncture tutorials and acupuncture training programs by referring to the board's CCR section 1399.426, uh, which reads as follows. Uh, 1399.426, supervising acupuncture responsibilities. The supervisor shall only assign those patient treatments which can safely and effectively performed by the trainee, which are consistent with the level of training received by the trainee. The supervisor shall provide continuous direction and immediate supervision of the trainee when patient services are provided. The supervisor shall be in the same facility and in proximity to the location where the trainee is rendering services and shall be readily available at all times to provide advice, instruction, and assistance to the trainee. Uh, Dr. Damone also states, and I quote, the regulatory language above reflects a reasonable and safe, ap reasonable approach to safe and pedagogically sound clinical supervision for both acupuncture tutorials and acupuncture training programs. We support immediate adoption of the standard for all acupuncture education in California, end quote. Uh, staff is uh, proposing to reject the comment. Um, uh, again, uh, the proposed changes uh, to 1399.433H and 1399.434H do not alter any of the existing clinical requirements that have been in regulation since 2005. Uh, a tutorial candidate works in very close proximity at all times with the supervisor in an environment much different from an acupuncture school. 
Uh, in a tutorial program, the tutorial supervisor works with only one or at most two trainees in a small clinic setting. This presents a drastically different learning environment and level of supervision when compared to a board approved acupuncture training program at educational institutions where common practice assigns a minimum number of four clinical student interns per clinical supervisor and in some cases exceeding that number in a larger clinical faculty facility setting. In addition, the tutorial training program requires a successful completion of a minimum of 3798 hours to be eligible for the licensing exam where board approved acupuncture training programs at institutions require a minimum of 3000 hours. Therefore, the requirements for CCR section 1399.426 would not be applicable here. Any comments from the board? Questions? None up here, Hildy. None, um, none here either. Any uh, public comment? Do we want to make a motion? Um, sure, I'll motion to approve the staff's recommendation to reject this comment regarding um, section 1399.433H and section 1399.434H. Second. Kitman seconds. Okay. Doctor. Let's do public comment. Y yes, Dr. Monet. Thank you. Bob DeMone again from the uh, Dean of the College of Eastern Medicine at SCU. So the way I would look, what if an acupuncture training program had 3,798 hours or more to equate with the hours of a tutorial program? Would that, the way that th this comment is, or a rejection of this comment is written, it would suggest that if an acupuncture program had as many hours as a tutorial training program, at least in that part, that, that there would be a softening of this rejection, perhaps, would be one comment. And the other comment is that uh, although there are a greater number of hours for a tutorial training program, has anyone gone to see how many of those hours precede the needling or clinical experience as compared to the acupuncture training programs? As a, comparing tutorial training programs. In other words, are we, are we comparing correctly here? And also, are there regulations that guarantee that when these tutorial supervisors are working, they're not uh, supervising one or two trainees, as is stated here, that they're not seeing private patients simultaneously? So again, the strength of this rejection, to me, could be uh, challenged by some of those concepts. Thank you. Put that out there. Any other public comments? What, one more. Steve Given, California Institute of Integral Studies. <clears throat> Just one additional comment. The implication that we are making a direct comparison between the 3,000 hours required by um, an accredited institution and the larger number of hours in a tutorial is really an apples to oranges comparison because the tutorial is not an accredited program with the extensive oversight required by the Accreditation Commission for Acupuncture and Oral Medicine. Thank you. Any further public comments? None up here. None here either. Uh, any last uh, comments from the board? None here. The only, the only comment I would make um, is for uh, Bob DeMone uh, to make a note of this section, and when we go revisit it in the future, please bring it up again. He, he affirmed. Is that... Um, is that something that we should officially assign then at this point to the education committee? We can. All right, let's let's do that. Um, should we just let's address? Go ahead and call for, sorry, one Hilda, more time? Should, we, should we just say review the supervision hours? Yes. Okay. I think there's two things. We want to revisit the revision hours and also the uh, the uh, first comment um, should be revisited. 
the as, as well. So those two those two comments, I think we need to both of the comments need to be revisited. So if we can assign that now, that'd be great. So that that least the public know that the board has taken action in revisiting that in the future. I'm sorry, I'm only capturing one item so far. Supervision hours is the second one, the tutorial training program you, you want to examine? First comment. That we had already signed. Yeah, yeah but already. that's also on the 700 hours. Yeah. So, yeah. so okay. we, Right, we had already done that. I, ben, I couldn't hear what you were saying. Are, are, are you referring to the first comment regarding the 700 hours? No, I'm referring to the comment that we've been discussing all along regarding the um, what Kelsey pointed out that we 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 uh, take took took out the languaging about the um, the site the the direct site of uh, supervision. Yet there's still the um, part Kelsey notified earlier that says that. They're in the. They're in the. They have to be in the room. Is that the part that you notified me? You notified earlier, Kelsey. I'm talking about that specific comment. Yes, the physical presence so, language. Okay. That is the part I think we need to revisit. Okay, so That's I'm capturing supervision hours and level of supervision or type of supervision. No, they're different. That's what the public is pointing out. They're making a difference between supervision and direct supervision. That's what they're pointing out. As far as the um, agenda item for, for an education committee, I okay. think that's the same issue, right? Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah, so the, the physically present slash supervision issue would be yes. one element on, or one, one item on the agenda for the education committee. Yes. Okay. Great. And, and for the board, let's make sure we stay in order here in terms of the comments, because I think we're, we're getting confused up here. So we, I think we're on the right page now, right, Ben? Yes. Okay. So right now we're on comment two. Correct. Right. And, and comment two. Both of the comments need to be revisited in the education committee. No, correct. But let, let's go on order. Okay. I think we're ready for a vote. Yep. Okay. Um, the motion is by Jamie Zamora to accept staff's recommendation to reject comment number two. The second is by Chan. The vote, Algonado? Yes. Zamora? Yes. Chan? Yes. Cordino? Francisco Shea? Yes. Jeannie Kang? Yes. Okay, 5 0, motion passes. Thank you, members. Number, uh, comment number three from Dr. Damone. Uh, he cites, and I quote, the, residential, the resident clinical supervision standards from the Accreditation Commission for Graduate Medal, Medical Education, ACGME, common program requirements. In decreasing order of supervisorial intensity, the ACGME guidelines identify three levels of clinical supervision. They are number one, direct supervision, number two, indirect supervision, and number three, oversight. Depending upon the risk, uh, depending upon the educational level of the resident and the relative complexity and associated risk of a given medical procedure, the appropriate degree of supervisorial oversight can be implemented using this model. A similar model would fit perfectly within the clinical supervision regulations for acupuncture training programs. We urge the board to seriously consider these guidelines." Uh, end quote. Uh, staff is proposing to reject this comment on the basis that the ACGME standards reflect the entrustable professional activity used within education models for physicians and osteopaths. These standards do not readily translate to acupuncture education models. Medical students may have more supervisory independence sooner than acupuncture students, but the same Western medical education requirements and hours prerequisites, such as a bachelor's degree and qualification testing, the MCAT, are not required of acupuncture students. Moreover, there are no established Nas uh, national acupuncture training supervision standards. Therefore, the board is emboldened to adhere to the system presently in place to ensure public protection. So that's our proposed response. To move the discussion forward, I motion to approve the staff's recommendation to reject this comment regarding section 
.433H and section 1399.434H. This is Hildy, I second. Okay. Discussion from the board members? None up here, Hildy. <coughs> Any discussion from the board members in Los Angeles? I'm here. Public comment? Dave Given, California Institute of Integral Studies. Thank you again for the opportunity to comment. I again respectfully suggest that the rejection is an apples to oranges comparison and that if we separate the literal requirements, which I agree are different for physicians when compared to licensed acupuncturists, the process itself is the same. That the, those folks that are most qualified to assess what level of supervision is required by an observer or trainee or intern are the faculty that are both licensed providers and have extensive experience in clinical education. And the, the issue is that you match the level of supervision to the, to the requirements of the clinician, the complexity of the procedure, and the needs of the, of the training program at that point. And that, that is true both for medical students, medical residents, and acupuncture interns. I also just want to make sure that while that 700 hours was removed in the modifica modification of the language, that the issue still remains 700 hours of line of sight supervision. The last 275 hours are line of sight supervision of needling. And I would agree with President Zeidman that that 275 hours of line of sight needling does in fact take the faculty member away from other duties that may be more critical. Thank you. Can I comment, Kelsey? Yes, you may. Or, or is, it, is this an area where we don't comment? You, you may comment. Yeah. Okay. Um, Steve, I understand what you're saying and I understand what Ron is saying. I think um, in the future, when, we, when this goes to the Education Committee, um, I think what we need to discuss is how, the, how does the student um, individually get trained in needling um, so that there is a certain level of credibility. And obviously, you, uh, Ron mentioned that there is already that process in the schools, um, and that, I think, is a common ground where the schools and the board could agree um, on the public safety part of what the regulations would need. But um, there is some there is some justification for a supervisor to have direct supervision at some parts of, of the students' training as well. So this this this. Um, section that um, Dr. Demone brings up with the ACGME, I understand that there are three different kinds of supervision. I think we have to revisit in the future in Education Committee for further discussion how that could be applied to the Acupuncture Board in a um, additional or a um, edited version of our regulation. Thank you. I, Thank I, you. I agree 100 percent and I look forward to that conversation. And if there's any way I can help, I am very happy to do so. Thank you. Thank you. So Kelsey um, or Ben, um, the, the comment number three, I think it, uh, I would like to also include into the education committee discussion as well. OK, I have uh, you requesting, what is a student's needling training at current approved acupuncture training programs as okay. the item. Did you also want 
national standards in acupuncture supervision? Okay. I, I mean, your voice is very blurry, so I'm agreeing with you because I'm assuming that you're understanding what I'm saying. Hmm. Um, well, I can walk national forward to the podium and repeat that. Or, Mark, would you like to? Jeannie? Yeah. Ben, ben uh, was just repeating back. He was wondering, he was wondering, you want to add the agenda item uh, for future board, uh, for a future discussion in the Education Committee, the notion of national acupuncture training standards? Supervision. Supervision, pardon me. Um, I'm not sure if I would want to label it national standard of supervision training or supervision training um, based upon our own regulations and revisiting the languaging. Okay. And if we need supplemental information that happens to be national, I, yes, I would like to look at it, but I, won't, I, don't, I wouldn't want to label it we're looking at quote-unquote national training programs. No, national training, um, national, national, whatever you just said. Or are you referring to the ACGME standards? Is that what you want us to look at? Yes, let's start there. Okay. So it's going back to just the supervision model. You want the education committee yes. to look at the yes, supervision ben. model. Yes. Understood. Looking at the supervision model and um, for supplemental purposes, if we were to look at the ACGME um, standards of you know, direct supervision, indirect supervision, and oversight, I think there's, that just needs to be part of the discussion. Understood. We will look at that model. A lot of supervision, yes. Okay, we'll, we'll do it, Jeannie. Thank you. Any other board comments? None. Oh, do we have, a, we have one other public comment? Uh, Ron Zeidman from Five Branches University. Um, just to clarify, so we have three uh, sections in this supervision which are the 150 hours, then the 275 hours, and then, and then the second 275 hours. The first 150 hours and the first 275 hours are, are not the point of contention. It's, mm -hmm. it's this third part, and, and this is what uh, Dr. Damone was referring to, that by, by requiring for that third level of supervision to be at a level one type of direct <laughs> Uh, observation of needling was not appropriate and was just to recognize that that the training goes in stages and to require a supervision at the third level which is appropriate to that not one that is defined by this first level of being directly there and just recognize that at least our program we accept the first 150 we accept the 275 they are the best education we can give it's just this Correct. third one that's, that's not supporting our education. Thank Point you for that clarification. And uh, Ben or Mark, I think let's put that into our notes um, for discussion at the Education Committee, please. We'll, we'll do. do. Point of clarification, Jeannie, there are four levels of supervision that we have currently in place in our regulation. The third okay. out, uh, section that uh, Dr. Zeidman had mentioned is direct supervision during the needling. The previous one, stage two, is direct physical presence. physical presence, excuse me, <laughs> let's be clear, uh, during the needling. The previous one was physical presence during needling and diagnosis. The fourth stage, which isn't enumerated, but it says a thereafter, uh, is they uh, consult with the supervisor before and after. They consult with what? The supervisor before and after. There is no physically present supervision happening in Got stage it. four. Okay. Okay. So the point of contention that I'm hearing here is for stage three, 275 hours of direct physically, excuse me, physically present supervision of needling. Okay. Thank you for that. Looks like we have more, one more public comment here. Bob Demone, Dean, College of Eastern Medicine. 
Just to point out, I would like to agree with my colleague, Dr. Ski Steve Given, sorry. Um, in the, the ACGME standards reflect entrustable professional activities and within a staged model of supervision, I personally can't see how uh, one could uh, disagree that that same process could readily translate to acupuncture educational models. Uh, I think that that process has been shown through much evidence to uh, apply bro you know, more, more broadly just to the, the act of, of uh, clinical pedagogy and that the board in future discussions needs to take that into consideration. Certainly we can discuss it is possible that the point at which those different categories of supervision are defined may be different for uh, uh, physicians, physician medical students Correct. as opposed to acupuncture Correct. interns, but still even the regulations in existence are a staged model of supervision. What I'm proposing is uh, using the ACGME standards as a model in the future for applying to acupuncture education, not lock, stock, and barrel with exact uh, I understand. Uh, same delineation. I understand. And, and, and um, Dr. Dibone, th th that's my point. Um, I have never been for us adopting models that you know the Western medical um, training programs have adopted. I think it's very important for us to customize it to the acupuncture profession or the Asian medicine profession. Um, but I think this kind of information and any other information that are out there, I think you or Steve or Ron all need to bring forth um, in those discussions in the future, okay? Thank you. Thank Let's you. Move on. May I add a comment, and that is that uh, I actually believe that we need to look more to the Western medical standards at a time when our graduates are facing the need to find jobs to offsite their lo loan debt. Institutions are under pressure from the federal government, Department of Education, to show gainful employment. The more that we align ourselves with the Western medical community, the more job opportunities our professionals have for the future. And the more we learn from each other, the more interprofessional activity that occurs. This is the direction of the future, and I would love to see the Acupuncture Board uh, approach its regulatory capacity with that knowledge in mind. Thank you. And Dr. Demone, I, I fully understand what you're saying. And I think there's a fine line that we need to take between what we adopt from the Western model and what we also keep that also identifies us as Asian medicine. So I fully understand where you're coming from, but we also have to be mindful. Um, I, I'm very much involved in integrative medicine right now. I understand what's out there. And I understand. Sorry, this history. is Kelsey Pruden, legal counsel. So um, I'm going to just. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Let's move We're getting off topic for what we. Let's move on. Thank you. Did we did we do a vote already? No. No. Nope. Any more public comment? Nothing here in Sacramento. We can't hear you guys. Did you guys? Uh, there's no comment up here, Hilda. We're ready for a vote. Mark. Okay. Uh, this is for the uh, Dr. Damone, uh, response to Dr. Damone, comment number three. The motion is by Jamie to uh, accept staff's recommendation to reject the comment. The second is by Hildy. The vote, Algonado? Yes. Zamora? Yes. Chan? Yeah. Cordino? Francisco Shea? Yes. Jeannie Kang? Yes. Okay, thank you. 5-0 motion passes. Moving along. Sir. Uh, the fourth comment from Dr. Damoni, he notes, quote, interpretation of immediate and direct supervision by the California Chiropractic Board and states that the Chir 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 California Chiropractic Board defines the terms immediate and direct supervision in a more liberal fashion than does the California Acupuncture Board as evidenced below. Immediate and direct supervision means the licensed doctor of chiropractic shall be at all times on the premises where the examinations are being conducted. The licensed doctor of chiropractic shall be responsible 
for the verification of the recorded findings and will be solely responsible for rendering a conclusion based on the findings, end quote. Staff is proposing to reject the comments. Uh, chiropractic education and practice has a different type of learning and clinical training than acupuncture. For example, chiropractic treatment does not involve the use of needles. Therefore, utilizing language that works for chiropractic education does not translate to the education, educational regulations proposed. Uh, so that is our recommendation for comment number four. Uh, I motion to accept the staff's recommendation to reject this comment. Second. Okay. Any discussion from the board? Second is from Chan. Any discussion from the board? None up here. Anything? Um, any public comment? We have none. We have none either. Let's go ahead and take a vote. Okay, the motion is uh, by Jamie Zamora to accept staff's recommendation to reject the comment. The second is by Kitman Shan. The vote, Algonado? Yes. Zamora? Yes. Chan? Yes. Cordino? Absent. Francisco Shea? Yes. Jeannie Kang? Yes. 5 0, motion passes. Okay, uh, the final comment from number five from Dr. Damone. We're on page five, comment number five. Uh, Dr. Damone asks that the board, uh, quote, that the board will consider placing on its future agenda the issue of updating and modernizing the California acupuncture clinical supervision regulations to reflect current scientific evidence and best practices within health profession or education, including those used by the medical profession, end quote. Uh, the, uh, the board's uh, the staff is recommending rejecting the comment that uh, we are, uh, the board is currently restoring the proposed regulations regarding clinical supervision so there will be no proposed changes to what is currently in place. In the future, the, may board, the board may look into reviewing the acupuncture training program clinical supervision requirements in light of any changes to the profession. At the time, the board is opting to keep the requirements as is for the reasons outlined above. So that's our proposed staff response. Right, I feel like this is something we could address and just as a future agenda item later on, correct? Okay. So this is Kelsey Pruden. I just want to clarify because <laughs> I helped craft this response. Um, it's a little bit confusing, but if you accept a comment, you have to show how you have changed the actual text of the regulation to accommodate that comment. So it's our suggestion to reject the comment, but the board, of course, may take it up at any time in the future. Okay. Okay, this is Hildy. Um, just to just to uh, ask a clarifying question. So, if we object, uh, um, if we agree to a comment and adopt a comment, that means we have to change language. Yes. But if we reject the comment, it doesn't mean we disagree with what the the stuff says. It just says that we're not changing any of the language. Right. 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 So, I mean, here we're actually putting this on the agenda, but the way that it's presenting is that we reject the comment. We're be also being conservative in calling this a comment. Um, it's, it's more of a suggestion for a future agenda item. Um, but for purposes of um, the record and right. what we're going to submit to OAL, we were conservative in placing this as a distinct comment. However, we have to operate within the rules right. of the commenting. And that requires that if you do accept a comment, you must show in the final statement of reasons how you have accommodated that comment by changing the regulation text. I think that's really helpful information. And Mark, if we can make sure that that gets incorporated um, in the, into the minutes as well, I think it's good uh, explanation going forward. Definitely. Wonderful. I think okay. we're ready for a motion. Sure. I'll motion to approve staff's recommendation to reject this comment. Second. Kitman seconds. Any further board discussion? Any public comment? Uh, yes. One, one up here. Steve Given, CIS. Um, I uh, greatly appreciate Ms. Pruden's clarification that rejecting this comment did not constitute an unwillingness to look at the uh, issues that have been brought up in this discussion 
I think, a very useful discussion in the future. And I just want to uh, continue to encourage the board to uh, make space for this discussion um, when possible. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Any other public comment? None. None, none Hildy. No public comment here. Let's go ahead and take a vote. Okay, the motion is by Jamie to approve staff's recommendation to reject comment number five. The second is by Kipman Chan. The vote. Algonado. Yes. Samora? Yes. Chan? Yes. Cordino? Absent. Francisco Shea? Yes. Jeannie Kang? Yes. Thank you, members. 5 0. Motion passes. Okay, uh, our second letter uh, was received via mail uh, on October 10th, uh, 2016. It was from Dr. Gregory Lane, doc, uh, Doctor of Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine, Director of Clinical Services at Pacific College of Oriental Medicine. Uh, Dr. Lane um, uh, had, he, uh, as I note here, thanked and acknowledged all the hard work and time invested by the board in deliberating the issues. So we're appreciative of that. Um, his letter had three comments regarding the proposed regulatory action, and you'll note that these are similar uh, to uh, the comments made by Dr. Damone. Uh, his first comment, Dr. Lane, uh, quote, feels that there, is, there remains work to be done in further revision of the regulatory language as it relates to clinical supervision and acupuncture programs. We respectfully request that a, in a future agenda, the CAB consider recommendations for regulation modification that would serve ideal clinical supervision in acupuncture training programs. We propose that any future changes would take into consideration current evidence and best practices in clinical teaching effectiveness and other health professions education, end quote. Uh, propor, uh, proposed staff response is to reject the comments. Um, we are currently restoring the proposed regulations regarding clinical supervision, so there will be no changes to what is currently in place in the future. The board may look into reviewing the acupuncture training program clinical supervision requirements in light of any changes to the profession. At this time, however, the board is opting to keep the requirements as is for the reasons outlined above. Uh, so that's our proposed response. Great, I feel like this is something we've already discussed that we talk about in the future, Dennis. So thank you for the comment, we appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to motion to reject this comment. Excuse me, let me clarify. I'd like to, uh, to approve to accept staff's, staff's recommendation. recommendation to reject this comment. Hildy, I second. Hildy seconds. Any board discussion? Any public comment? Oh, uh, Kipman has a comment, Hildy. Oh. oh, 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 no comment. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. No board comment here in LA either. Uh, let's take public comment. None up here. None here either. Let's go ahead and take a vote. <coughs> okay, the motion is by Jamie to accept staff's recommendation for uh, comment number one from Dr. Lane to reject the comment. The second is by Hildy. The vote, Algonado. Yes. Zamora? Yes. Chan? Yes. Corradino? Absent. Francisco Shea? Yes. Jeannie Kang? Yes. 5 0, motion passes. Comment number two from Dr. Lane. He also cites ACGME common program requirements, writing that, quote, the current evidence and best practices in health professions education supports a tiered approach which aims towards a higher level autonomy of the clinical super student utilizing competency-based assessments on the part of supervisors. As you can see, there is a clearly delineated tier structure providing for the appropriate level of oversight balanced with self-directed learning with the goal of developing well-trained future practitioners and protecting public safety. We believe this model so the we believe this model also fits our profession, end quote. Uh, proposed staff responses to reject the comments. The ACGME standards reflect the entrustable professional activity used within the education models for physicians and osteopaths. These standards, those standards do not readily translate to acupuncture education models. Medical students may have more supervisory independence sooner than acupuncture students, but the same Western med medical education requirements and hours prerequisites bachelor's degree 
and qualification testing, MCAT at the very least, are not required of acupuncture students. Moreover, there are no established national acupuncture training supervision standards, therefore the, bold, the board is emboldened to adhere to the system presently in place to ensure public protection. And that is our proposed staff response. Again, very similar to what we already addressed with Dr. Demone. Uh, I'll motion to accept the staff's recommendation to reject this comment. Kitman Chan seconds. Any board discussion? Hearing none, any public comment? None. No public comment here either. Let's move forward to a vote. Okay, uh, the motion is by Jamie uh, to accept staff's recommendation to reject Dr. Lane's second comment. The second is by Chan, the vote. Algonado? Yes. Zamora? Yes. Chan? Yes. Cordino? Absent. Francisco Shea? Yes. Jeannie yes. Kang? Yes. 5 0, motion passes. Okay, the third and final comment. Um, Finally, Dr. Lane states that, quote, we would like to bring to attention to the CAB that there are inconsistencies in the regulations governing clinical supervision and acupuncture tutorials and in acupuncture training programs. We respectfully request that these regulations be considered in a future agenda for rewording to close disparity and bring into alignment the regulations, end quote. He is, of course, referring to the board's CCR section 1399.426, which reads as follows. 1399.426, supervising acupuncture responsibilities. The supervisor shall only assign those patient treatments which can be safely and effectively performed by the trainee and which are consistent with the level of training received by the trainee. The supervisor shall provide continuous direction and immediate supervision of the trainee when the patient services are provided. The supervisor shall be in the same facility and in proximity to the location where the trainee is rendering services and shall be readily available at all times to provide advice, instruction, and assistance to the trainee. The staff uh, proposes to reject the comments. Uh, the proposed changes to section 1399.433H and 1399.434H do not alter any of the clinical super, clinical, clinical, yeah. Too many C's. Current clinical requirements that have been in regulation since 2005. A tutorial candidate works in very close proximity at all times with the supervisor in an environment much different from an acupuncture school. In a tutorial program, the tutorial supervisor works with only one or at most two trainees in a small clinic setting. This presents a drastically different learning environment and level of supervision when compared to a board approved acupuncture training program at educational institutions where common practice assigns a minimum of four clinical student interns per clinical supervisor, and in some cases exceeding that number in a larger clinical facility setting. In addition, the tutorial training program requires the successful completion of a minimum of 3,798 hours to be eligible for the licensing exam, whereas board approved acupuncture training programs and institutions require a minimum of 3,000 hours. Therefore, the requirements from CCR section 1399.426 would not be applicable here. So that's our proposed staff response. It is, again, same as we took up with uh, Dr. Demones. Any board comment? Uh, I'll motion to approve staff's recommendation to reject this comment. Microphone. Oh, Kitman. On, Kitman. Good turn it on. Yeah. yeah. Oh. We can't hear on this end. Is that a second? Yeah, I'm the second. I'm coming on it. This is a, the same as if we are voting for it. So that's why I make a second. Yeah. Any um, board discussion? And here in LA, it sounds like there's none over there in Sacramento. Any public comment? None up here. None over here either. Let's go ahead and take a vote. Okay, the motion uh, is by Zamora to accept staff's recommendation to reject Dr. Lane's comment number three. The second is by Chan. The vote, Algonado? Yes. Zamora? 
Yes. Chan? Yes. Fordino? Absent. Francisco Shea? Yes. Jeannie Kang? Okay, 5 0. This motion passes. Thank you, members. Yes, so, to go and do the proposed order of adoption. Right. Um, basically, two. members, this is, uh, let me get to it. This is, uh, this is essentially the same that we, it's the same language that we approved at the uh, September 21st, 2016 meeting in San Diego, uh, which of course reduces, uh, which removes the uh, 700 hours line of sight, et cetera, et cetera. So it's essentially the same. This is just the final step, uh, as Kelsey mentioned earlier. Uh, once, uh, if this gets approved, we can then include this in our rulemaking file, which we will then submit uh, for um, hopeful approval. So this is the last step we need to kind of close this, close this out and move it on to um, DCA agency and OAL. I move to approve the proposed order of adoption for the proposed regulations to delegate the authority to the executive officer to complete the rulemaking file and to make any technical and non-substantive changes that may be required. I'll second. Any discussion from the board? Any public comment? We have none. Hearing none, let's go ahead and take a vote. Okay, uh, the motion is by Algonado to approve the proposed order of adoption for the proposed regulations and to delegate the authority to the executive officer to complete the rulemaking file and to make any technical and non-substantive changes that may be required. The second is by Zamora. Uh, the vote, Algonado. Yes. Zamora? Yes. Chan? Yes. Ordino? Absent. Francisco Shea? Yeah. Beanie Kang? Yes. 5 0. Motion is adopted. Okay, thank Wonderful. you. Thank you, members. I'd like to take a quick moment to thank Dr. Debone, Dr. Gibbons, and Dr. Zyman for your work the last two meetings. We appreciate it. Uh, we want to get this right, and we know uh, we have a lot more work to do in the following committee meetings. So thank you all. Absolutely, and thank you to the staff as well, especially Mark, for preparing such a comprehensive packet. Um, to the board members for a thorough discussion on this. Um, we're very glad that we're moving forward and moving forward eff effectively and diligently on this. Um, so let's go ahead and move to the next agenda item, which uh, is also Mark. Number six, consideration and possible action regarding proposed regulations to Title 16 CCR Section 1399.469, which is the uniform standards related to substance abuse. Okay, uh, thank you, Hildy. Uh, members, this was continued from the last uh, board meeting. It was agendized in September, but due to time constraints, we, we moved it to this one. Um, this is um, something that we've been working off and on for uh, quite a while now, but I uh, think we finally have a really uh, solid approach. Um, basically, what's happening is we're going to be um, we're going to be approving amended language to SB 1441. Uh, the board had previously approved the language back in September 18, 2015. Um, we did uh, release the approved language and the proposed disciplinary guidelines for public comment for a 45-day public comment, uh, which was closed on May 30th, 2016. We did not receive any public comments. Um, we did review this package, um, uh, Kelsey and, and, and staff reviewed this package, and she had had some suggested changes, so I'm going to have her jump in and help us through those. Hello again, Kelsey Pruden, Legal Counsel. So um, there, since uh, you guys started this process with SB 1441 and your disciplinary guidelines, there have been some um, changes in um, the interpretation of uh, Business and Professions Code Section 315, which is your authorizing for SB 1441, your authorizing statute. Um, and so when looking at your package, um, I made a couple suggestions. One was to um, not incorporate the disciplinary guidelines with your SB 1441 standards. And the reason for that is one, um, in my humble opinion, your guys' disciplinary guidelines do need some work, um, and that is something that we're that staff I know is working on. 
and we will be bringing to you for um, updates on that. Um, and so because that was not ready yet, um, it, it, I think, made a little bit more sense to do them as two separate documents. The second reason being is that they may apply in different cases. And so um, for clarity purposes, um, if you do not, if the board does not find a substance abusing um, licensee, they would use the disciplinary guidelines. If they do find a substance abusing licensee, then they, in most instances, would be required to use the standards. So um, my thought is for clarity purposes to um, untie the two and make them two separate documents. Um, and then there's also your self-executing language, um, which I, the proposed language um, on page one under this section, the section six, um, under the second, I guess, colored page. Um, you can see the double underline in section B. Um, and that is, again, due to some changes in interpretation of that statute. Um, the Board of Pharmacy requested from the Attorney General's office an opinion on this matter. And so we got that um, in 2015. And so um, since then, um, there's been a little change in implementation of that. But prior to that, it was thought that um, you had to use the, the standards in any case where there was um, substance abuse or drugs. Not substance abuse, but any sort of a, one DUI. Alcohol um, or drugs. Alcohol or drugs across the board. That's not the case anymore. So here, um, this self-executing language, uh, I think, will help the board in um, if they conduct a hearing, if you sit with an ALJ or you have an ALJ sit in your place and you, and you have a proposed decision, um, and they make a finding through that hearing that there is a substance abusing licensee, that's what triggers the standards to come into play. And so that gives one due process to the licensee that you're making that finding, that you're collecting evidence to find a substance abusing licensee. And then it also um, triggers when those standards will apply. So that finding must be made. Um, so it doesn't, con it's not all cases. And so it gives the board that um, kind of guidance as to when they apply and when they don't apply, when the disciplinary guidelines would apply. So, um, and it also uh, allows the board their subsection C, which was added, which also says that you can apply additional terms um, on top of those standards. So you could apply some of your disciplinary guidelines if the board so found that in, in one particular case, the facts made it such that you would want to add different things. So um, I think that this language gives the board a lot more flexibility um, in terms of their decisions. Um, I think that it gives your enforcement staff, um, in terms of your settlements, um, a lot more flexibility. And um, so that's why I proposed this particular language. Are we up against any statutory deadlines with 1441 at all? The only deadline is that you have noticed it. Okay. So um, we do have one year from that initial right. notice period. Yeah, so basically, Jamie, we'll, base, we'll need to submit it to OAL no later, I believe, than April 6th oh, okay. of next year. Okay. So we're, we're in good shape, but we do we wanted to kind of move along on this one right. because it's relatively non-controversial. A lot of other boards have done it. Okay. Um, so... We do, we do have the hindsight of other boards doing it yes. now. So that's, that's part nice. of why this language, how this language has been developed. Um, and then the other thing is just um, context that um, SB 1441 um, became effective in 2011, I right. believe. Yeah. Or not before 20, that, I'm sorry. But the standards, yeah, the and standards. the SAC standards were implemented in 2011. Yeah, the standards were implemented in 2011. So oh, okay, it's, then, yeah. it's been some time. Yeah, <laughs> should get these done. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. Kelsey, one quick, one quick question. Mm -hmm. um, the uniform standards, when it says 20, uh, September 2016, is that referring to the revision date or the date that we have to approve it? Like, would that get changed to October? 
because this gets referenced, uh, incorporated by reference in the actual reg. So right. we have to get it specific. So the statute just requires that we have a some sort of revision date, some sort of indicator um, that shows when it is. If you guys um, would like to change it to October, that's fine because we do have to put it out for notice. Um, we just we created the document in September in 2016, September. so that's that's the the reason for the date. Um, in terms of um, what OAL is looking at, the date is not going to matter too much to them. What matters to them is that you have a date. So, but if you're more comfortable with doing um, October 2016, that can definitely be done. But again, it's not. And, and the other thing is that it's not going to go into play. It's not going to be. Um, put in place um, until, you know, we get it into OAL, um, but, and I think there I'm is a mechanism for um, keeping the date until the actual date that it goes into effect. We could do that as well, so. I think, um, I, I'm, I'm not really particular about the exact date as we use, so long as we keep everything consistent going forward. So if we've traditionally just dated documents using the date they were originated and not the, the date they were approved, which sounds like it, was, it would be a moving target anyways, let's just move forward with September. Okay. So that, that's, that's, a, that's, that's what we have here. Um, and again, the, the we will be going back to the 1996 disciplinary guidelines. You, you guys may recall that we did um, propose a lot of just basic changes to our disciplinary guidelines. Oh, we're not talking, about, I'm sorry, okay. Okay, 1441. So anyway, we're gonna, this is what we're proposing to move forward with. <laughs> okay, well then I'll move to approve the proposed regulatory modified text and document for a 15-day public comment period, and if, there are any, and if there are no comments, to delegate the authority to the executive officer to make any technical and non-substantive changes that may be required and to adopt the proposed regulatory language. And if I just may, um, very quickly, this is Kelsey Pruden again. So um, I realized last night on the actual um, incorporated by reference document, the uniform standards, um, that I needed to do double underline, double strike through on all of that. So that will be changed. We will update that to um, indicate that it did the double strike through where it was single strike through. Got it. Uh, second. This is Hildy, all second. Thank you. Any more discussion? And it's okay to move forward with the double strike through, even though Jamie started the motion before you noted the double strike through. Okay. Being technical. Any further board discussion? Nothing Hearing up here. None. Any public comments? We have none. We have none either. Um, let's go ahead and take a vote. Okay, the motion is by Jamie uh, to approve the proposed regulatory modified text and document for a 15-day public comment period, and if there are no comments, to delegate the authority to the executive officer to make any technical and non-substantive changes that may be required and to adopt the proposed regulatory changes, uh, also including the double strike-through, uh, as, as noted by council. The second is by Hildy. The vote, Algonado? Yes. Zamora? Yes. Chan? Yes. Ordino? Absent. Francisco Shea? Yes. Jeannie Kang? Yes. Okay, 5 0 motion passes. Thank you, members. And that's all that's all I have. <laughs> all right. Wonderful. Thank you very much again, Mark. This is uh, very good progress we're making and I appreciate all your work. Thank you. Um, Let's move on to number seven, public comment for items not on the agenda. Do we you guys have, have any? anything up there? Nothing here. Not up here. We don't have public here, so um, let's move on. Number eight, future items, future agenda items. Does anybody have anything they'd like to put on the agenda? 
think we have the whole list, right, that we already have? Okay, gotcha, Ben, thanks. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna place the onus on all of us also to review those committee agendas and make sure that we have caught everything. Um, we've been doing a flurry of activity as of late and wanna make sure that everything that we've assigned is actually on the agenda. So when those right. agendas come out, please, please take a look at them and make sure that everything that we talked about is on there. Um, ben, have we decided when the next meeting is? Uh, we are proposing to move the meeting to December 14th. I am waiting for all board members to uh, transmit confirmation of that date. Uh, and then are those, those committee or full, full board meetings? That will be a, uh, proposing a committee and full board meeting uh, date so that we can uh, move forward with any matters that the board needs to address as a full board and if there's any direction that they want to take from the committees from that day and that the committees will meet at the beginning of the day um, so the board, full board will meet at the end of the committee session. Great. Wonderful. And will that be a, a, a in-person meeting as opposed to a teleconference? Correct. That will be in-person, and currently we have a location reserved in Oakland at a state facility. Yeah, wonderful. At that, um, that in-person meeting, we'll go ahead and um, do the, the pomp and circumstance around Ben's new um, position. But uh, to tantalize all of you over a teleconference, um, Ben was sworn in as our executive officer recently. So congratulations to Ben. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we look forward to updating everyone in person, in, um, hopefully around December 14th or so. Okay. We would also be setting the calendar for our 2017 uh, meeting schedule at that meeting. And just to make a pitch online to all those who are watching, if you're not getting any emails from the board or feel like you haven't been getting anything, please let us know because Mark does a good job of letting everybody know. So we want to make sure everyone knows what we're doing. Roger that. Wonderful. Any, any other comments from the board? No, I think we're good, Hildy. Hearing none, let's, uh, I move to adjourn. All right. So moved. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> Thank you, Hildy. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks. Jeannie. Thanks, Hildy. Members.